Due to popular demand, Cody and I have decided to make an adventure cat training series. Walking a cat is very different from walking a dog, but here's what we did to train Cody with a leash and harness and some tips and advice that we hope help your experience with your own adventurous fluffball. Number one, early and often. We started going on walks with Cody as soon as he was three months old. We consistently took him on walks every day for the first year of his life. When we started out, we kept it fairly short, about 30 to 45 minutes, and as he got older, these walks would stretch up to six hours. But I believe the key aspect of the training was the consistency and routine. Cody has always loved going outside, so associating the leash and the harness with his favorite part of every day was a big part of his acceptance of it. Number two, slow and steady. It's important to manage your expectations of walking a cat from the start. It will never be anything like walking a dog. When walking Cody, he much prefers going a little distance and then exploring and wandering around the area. Whenever you want to keep moving, instead of pulling him, I would just walk in the direction that we would be going, hold the leash firm, and wait for him to stop trying to go in another direction and follow along. If he continued to fight it, I'd just pick him up and carry him for a little bit, set him back down, and try it again. Patience is key with the process as well as keeping in mind that the walk is more for him than for me. Number three, backpacks are great. If you'd like to go on a longer distance or if your cat is just having a bad walking day, a backpack is super helpful. I always start our walks with Cody inside the backpack until we get to a place a bit further away from people. If we need to cover a larger distance for the day, I'll just put him on top for different stretches of the walk. And on his own, Cody started asking for a ride if he was getting tired. We would not have had the patience to walk Cody every day for a year if we didn't have the backpack. It makes travel with the cat much more possible and enjoyable, and I highly recommend it. I hope this helps, and follow along for the next four parts on how we train Cody as an adventure cat. Due to popular demand, Cody and I have decided to make an adventure cat training series. Traveling with a cat can sometimes be a bit stressful, but here's what we did to help Cody adapt better to travel with some tips and advice that hopefully help the future traveling experiences of your own adventurous fluffball. Number one, car travel. We started taking Cody on walks every day as soon as he was three months old and quickly realized this was his favorite thing ever. That and food, of course. At about three and a half months, we began taking Cody for short drives in the van to go on walks in different places nearby. The idea was to have Cody link car travel with getting to go on a walk. We reinforced this by always having food in the van as soon as he got in. After a few months of this, Cody is now completely comfortable in the van and can calmly travel with me for drives up to five to eight hours without getting restless. Number two, plane travel. Cody went on his first international adventure at seven months old from Germany to the family ranch in Wyoming. We aren't working with any of these brands, but the equipment we had was a huge difference maker for this trip. We traveled for 24 hours from train to plane to car, and it was super nice having the expandable bag and the travel litter box that we got beforehand. I could carry Cody around in the airplane regulation sized bag when needed, but then give him double the space at any time that we were settled down for a bit. I could easily take his litter box out of my backpack in the train, airport, and even airplane bathrooms every couple hours to make sure he was as comfortable as possible. United has a great in-cabin pet policy, and all the airport security was super relaxed about his food packets I brought, even though Cody always eats wet food and gel. Number three, introducing change is something positive and normal. After Cody turned three months old, we began changing up his location quite often. Both Cody's mom and myself travel a lot as is, but I began taking Cody with me everywhere that I went throughout the first year of his life. Cody's life was full of change, new places, different sleeping locations, new walking paths, etc. The goal was to show him that no matter what the change was that was happening, we were still there, he's still going to go on a walk, he's still going to get food, he's still going to have a warm place to sleep, and there was nothing to be stressed about. Basically, the theory was to get Cody to adapt to change and travel by just introducing him to as much change and travel as possible while showing it was all okay and he was always safe no matter what. I don't know how much of Cody's ability to travel with minimal stress is his personality or the way we trained him, but he is an incredible travel buddy to bring along just about everywhere. I hope this helps and follow along for the next three parts of how we train Cody as an adventure cat. In part three of Cody's Adventure Cat training series, we're going over characteristics and personality traits we identified in Cody that notified us of his adventurous fluff nature. Here are some things to look for to see if your fluff might be adventurous too. Number one, breeds prone to adventuring. I want to start this out by saying that none of this is based on fact, but our experience and research alone. Each cat is unique and different, but these are just the things that we use to make our own decisions with Cody. During our research, we found multiple cat breeds that have a higher chance of turning out to be an adventure cat. The ones that kept popping up were Bengals, Ragdolls, Maine Coons, Turkish Vans, and American Shorthairs. Cody is half Maine Coon, half mystery outdoor cat, and though I researched breeds beforehand, when I met Cody I forgot to even ask, and it was only later after we had brought him home that I found out he was part Maine Coon. With that said, I don't think you should count out a little explorer kitten just because he's not the breed that you researched. Number two, kitten personalities and first impressions. Adventure cats are often social, exploratory, and high energy. When meeting kittens, there are a few personality traits you should keep an eye out for. The first is how social are they? Does the kitten come up and want to meet you? How attached are they already to their current caretaker? 
If they don't want to leave the person that's been caring for them or are overly cautious about the new person entering the room, it might be an indicator that the personality is just more relaxed and less adventurous. The next is how playful and curious are they? Cody didn't spend much time saying hi to us because he was already exploring the box we brought and proceeded to go check out every corner of the apartment while we spoke to his current caretaker. Number three, Cody's adventurous personality and characteristics. Arguably the most important indicator if your cat might be an adventure cat is how obsessive they are with the windows and wanting to go outside right from the start. Cody loves playing and Cody loves food, but as soon as we stepped outside with Cody for the first time, none of that mattered at all to him anymore. Cody is at his happiest if he's spending at least eight hours a day outside, and the only thing he ever complains about is if he can't go outside when he wants to go outside. Yes, I'm biased, but in my opinion, Cody is an adventure cat of the purest form. He adapts quickly to change and isn't stressed out easily. He's social and playful with a ridiculous amount of energy every day. He's an explorer obsessed with the outdoors and seems to grasp the concept of different situations when he should relax a little bit, like snoozing straight through a seven-hour car drive. If any of this reminds you of another fluff you know, you might have an adventure cat too. I hope this helped and follow along for the last two parts of the adventure cat training series. For the fourth part of Cody's adventure cat training series, we're going over some potential dangers that came up during Cody's training and how you can avoid them with your own adventurous fluff. Number one, dogs. While out with Cody, we encounter a countless number of dogs, some on leash, some not. Most dogs we've encountered have been well behaved, but there's been about three to four that pose a real threat. The main thing to avoid any attacks is to remain aware of your surroundings at all time. Try to be prepared before the dog ever gets close enough to even notice your cat. The method that has worked for me each time is as soon as I noticed a dog was coming our way, I'd just put Cody on top of the backpack and keep a finger holding onto his harness. You'll want to do this before your cat gets freaked out because it's a much easier process when they aren't in panic mode. It's still possible after panic mode, but you may have some new decorative scratch-shaped tattoos to thank your kitty for. Number two, climbing. Cody loves climbing trees, but with a leash, this does pose a danger. There are a few times I let him go a little too high with the leash still on, and he would get the leash wrapped around a twig and get stuck. At this point, it becomes a race against time on whether you can climb the tree and get the leash off before he slips and starts hanging. I've had about four to five panicked instances of climbing trees faster than I thought was possible, but this can be avoided by not allowing your cat to climb too high in any tree while they still have a leash on. Please be careful and learn from my mistakes here. Number three, slippable harness. Probably the most commented topic on Cody's channel has been about his harness. It's important to find a harness that your cat can't slip easily out of, but it's even more important to make sure that your cat can still slip out of it when they're stuck. A good measurement is to make sure you can always fit two fingers in between your cat's back and the harness and test out pulling the harness off over their head to make sure they can slither out if necessary. Just because I know this question will come a million times, we unfortunately can't find a link for ours, but its brand is Annie One Wild Series designed for Chihuahuas. I hope this helps keeping your fluffy one safe and follow along for the last part of the Adventure Cat training series.